Welcome back everybody. I am so excited. I've been meaning to do this much, much sooner. I had already started filming and then thank goodness before I even got into the process, I could stop and we're going to start all over again. A car stopped right behind that hedge there and was on idle for about 20 minutes. I was this close to go and tell him, excuse me, please, perdona, you know, disturbing, quiet, please, filming going on. But anyway, here we are. We're going to start again. Orchid room gems. Time to get them popped up. They've been soaking for the last 24 hours. I have not had them dry since they arrived, except for the Ceratostylus here. We'll get to that, but I have been preparing everything and yes, the pots look dirty, but they are clean. It's just staining from before. I don't have brand new ones of those anymore. And then I think I'm prepared with everything. But my ceramics, I have some uh, sponge rock just in case I need it. It is the large size, but I can squash it. My RO water, no fertilizer at this point. They've had enough and my LECA. So I'm gonna get you situated. Definitely Ninja Yellow needs to be taken care of ASAP and we'll move straight on to the Lottie Jessie eye and I'll move her out of the sun right now because the 20 minutes actually were fundamental and suddenly I'm in full blast sun as it goes. Right, let's get you sorted and let's get these taken care of. And we're going to start with the Ninja Yellow. So my pot, I've already prepared it. This one is oversized and I'm going to intend to keep the strands upright because it is such a tall pot. And the orchid room has a lot more different materials to accommodate a much more effective wicking process. So I'm going to do it with three strands and hope for the best. In the beginning, this could be a bit fiddly because I'm just going to hold up the strands a little bit to accommodate Lekka going down underneath. She has incredible roots. Absolutely incredible, so I won't be putting much Lekka in on the bottom. Okay, refocus, rethink. Yes, I'm in a hurry because the sun is coming over here, but I still need to take my time. So I've got some lecker on the bottom. When I place the orchid in, I'm gonna drape some of the microfiber over the roots. These were mainly aerial roots, but I'm going to put them in regardless. And I did manage to snap one, oh! which is unfortunate. The pot is big enough. I do not need to twist the orchid whatsoever. She'll fit in very nicely, just like this. I'm just gonna go grab the microfiber from the bottom and use the structure of, to raise it up so that my wicking is more evenly on the inside. There we go, like that. And then I'm just gonna fill around and hope for the best. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna leave her like this and get her out of the sun, because the principle is the continuous, just filling her up all the way, all right, to the top. So basically, that would be her done, and I don't want to waste any time now out in the hot sun with her. I just would need to fill her up to the top of the pot, but right now she's fine, and uh, she's going to get her hydration, but I'm gonna put her straight into, back into the dining room area where she can acclimatize better. All right, she is in her place. Next up is 
Calarsum bicornutum. Shame on me, I'm still reading it from the tag. I thought I had it nailed down now. So let's try that again. Calarsum bicornutum. Because you see what I do is every time I touch the pot, move the pot, flush the pot, water with the pot, anything at all, I repeat the name over and over again from that specific orchid so that it, I drum it into my head. Doesn't always work, as we well know, but it helps it to start with. So what I'm doing here, because the roots are on a upward angle, I don't want that. I'm gonna lay the orchid down by the side, keep her a little bit lower, increase the humidity down in the bottom to help that the roots actually go down and the growth itself will come up and grow up in the direction of the light anyway. So this may also be, for the time being, just a half full pot. If you're new to my channel, welcome. This is the orchid room. I have a collection within a collection now. <laughs> These are the new arrivals from the orchid room. Very, very happy to have them. Got a wonderful letter explaining it all to me, which I think is so useful. I get easily overwhelmed with new orchids. My brain kind of goes poof, you know, I have this, I don't know, it just flares up in my head. And then I can lose the plot quite quickly when I'm excited. <laughs> so yeah, I have this collection within a collection. The orchid room has been super generous. And boy, when I look this one up, the blooms, oh my word. Oh, I'm very excited to see them. Very, very excited. So for the time being, this is all I'm going to do. Just to leave her a little bit at an angle. I have the support if I need to bring her up, bring the growth up and direct it in an upright position. But for now, I'm all about the roots, the new roots down there that I want to grow into the media. Just picked out a few of the little ones to get them in there a bit more precise. And that should be it. Let's get this big one out of the way and put a little one in its place. And I can fuss with this for several hours, but this is the principle. It looks a little odd, but I believe this will work. Add the tag. There we go. That new growth is big enough. I am absolutely not concerned about rotting. So I hope it doesn't prove me wrong, but it is big enough in order to grow on its own. When the orchid is mature and settled, situated, maybe next spring, I can then redirect and reposition her. By that time, the growth is hopefully up here and in a somewhat upright position. So for a year or two, it might look a little wonky, but this is a start. And this is how I can best keep the new roots from drying out little bit lower in the pot and uh, not as much lecker at an angle to target the root specifically. Perfect. Next up. Lorde Jessii crossed with Skinnery. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm not going to be so aggressive with filling up on this one because she has a wonderful root system. The orchid room also grows in inorganic media. So I'm not that concerned about transitioning or anything like that. It gives me a lot of hope. <laughs> okay, come here, you beautiful piece of gorgeousness. Look at this. Two gorgeous new growths. Got some roots that are going to need some attention. I'm not cutting anything off. There's no need. This pot is big enough for a year or two and that's how she will stay. In inorganic media these roots are doing absolutely no harm. There's nothing to it. Contrary to what many do for the time being, I always let the orchid do her thing, stay as she is. Don't fiddle, don't mess. I don't 
I, I can get carried away too quickly and then this and then that bit and then that way. No. That's just for me. I just want her to get established in my environment. And then when she is, I can fiddle with the roots at my heart's leisure in a year or two, depending on how she fills out the pot. All right, let's give you back your native pebbles and rocks and stones. There you go. Make you feel at home quickly. And then the rest is new stuff. So excited. I was very overwhelmed. Everybody who watched the unboxing video of these gorgeous, gorgeous orchids. Yes, I got emotional. No, I don't like that I did. I have left the video up just to see how the response is because I don't want people thinking that I am, never mind what they think. Uh, yeah, I don't want it to be awkward. Let's say it like that. So your comments gave me courage to just leave the video as it is because I was thinking I'm gonna leave it up 24 hours when uh, Annabelle has seen the video and then I would put it on private. But your comments were very kind and understanding. So thank you very much. I shall decide to leave the video up. Thank you, I really appreciate it. All right, with this one, because I want it situated in its permanent position, I'm just gonna tap the lecker into place. which shifts the orchid around a little bit, but that's not a problem. Put the big chunks in the back, and then we'll fill her up. And I mentioned that I'm not filling the reservoirs now with any fertilizer until they've drunk it dry. They've had plenty. They came with moist tissue around them. And the tissue had Super Thrive on it, They've had their calcium magnesium soak overnight since their arrival. So now it's just about getting them situated and used to their new climate. And that's all there is for Lodi Jessii crossed with Skinnery. I've made a few labels and we're good to go. Perfect, let's get you out of the sun. Next up, this one, the Ceratostylis retisquama. I'm very, very concerned about it, but I won't fiddle with it too much because it lost four leaves overnight. So I'm very, very worried, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna put it into the little ceramist cup and then we'll see what it does. So same principle for all of them. I have a support because I think I'm going to need it. And before I fiddle with the orchid, I'm going to put a little bit of the support on first. I'm very concerned about this one. A, because I don't know it. B, I have read up about it. And C, it dropped four leaves, boom looked at it this morning and I'm like, what? What are you doing? That was not part of the plan. Give me a, give me a chance, won't you? All right. Ceramus. This is my recycled ceramus. So we need more orchids because we need more ceramus. What can I say? how the cookie crumbles here. Not just placing an order for ceramics <laughs> to Wichmann. I mean, really? Who does that? <laughs> we'll see what they got. Under these circumstances, let's speed things up a bit. There we go. That's better. Let that drain out. Instead of spraying. Okay, little one. Like a maxi, the orchid room said, like a maxi. And my maxis are doing well. So if that isn't 
boost in the motivation? I don't know. What else is? Now what I'm going to do is keep her a little bit lower while I fill the ceramics and then I'll pull her up to the height that I want her afterwards. I still need my little kiddo's shovel, beach shovel for this ceramics. <laughs> One day I'm going to show up with something, something psychedelic, beach shovel. All right, now that's about good enough. I'm going to give it a squeeze and pull. Ariel, if you see this video, I'm sorry, Annabelle. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't help it. I call her Ariel. Um, Annabelle, if you see this video and you disagree with what I'm doing, please, please intervene. The sooner the better, okay? I have read your letter and I understand self-watering ceramics. I'm doing semi-hydro. I think based on the amount of flushing I do with newcomers, that's going to be fine but if you see anything here that is concerning you and saying Nina that's not going to work please let me know straight away okay then I can amend accordingly all right this looks a little bit crude for now but I think it'll do the trick just nicely so the roots are somewhat let me get a little bit more See, I got the sponge rock ready. I think I won't have enough ceramics for three more cups. We'll take perlite. There we go. Look at that dust coming off, despite the fact it's recycled. Perfect. And into protected space you go. Catlia Maxima Cerula. All right, so with this little one, I'm going to leave it a little bit lower in the pot as well. I have a support for any eventualities, but I'd like the pot to give it a little bit more stability and humidity down at the base. Now, ceramics can be extremely desiccating. So it's fundamental to keep pots flush, wet, reservoir filled up, all of that, especially with these new, if that is not addressed and taken care of, ceramics can take new roots down and just desiccate them. So this doesn't look like much, but there's no need to overdo it because the most important thing now is to get those roots into the ceramics. Now what I'm going to do is plug the holes before I pour it in to saturate the ceramics completely. As you'll see it starts to float a bit. There's so much air in ceramics. I hope I'm holding it at an angle correctly. You can see how it's trying to float until it has the weight of the water in it. But once it is fully absorbed, that's it. Your roots will be absolutely fine. It just takes a few minutes. So this is important now to keep this ceramics wet, very wet, always wet. And then we'll just add the tag. I doubt I will ever forget this one. But you never know. Okay. That's it. No more, no less. Catacetum albovirens. Albovirens. I kid you not. I took the tissue off, off camera. The roots had extended and attached themselves to the tissue. <laughs> so there you go. You can tell it was a great idea. So this one has been in Lekka, Grow Stones and Ceramis. And I will put it back into Lekka and some Perlite. 
And oh goody, I'm outside because I don't want to be inhaling this. So we are okay with mixing it up a bit. As long as there's water retention, that's fine. There will be a bit of algae. I need to save some for this Ignotus Wine Delight. Let's put the label in and make sure that we're all set. If need be, I will always top up with Lekka. That I have in my supply kit. Look at how it floats. So maybe I need to put some sellotape around this to cover the holes and just let everything soak up the moisture. Again, this is not fertilized. They've had their Super Thrive. So this is just to get them situated into their location and hydrate the media so as not to desiccate the roots. This looks like a latte macchiato. Oh, the other way around maybe, but something like that. <laughs> There we go, that's one. And we'll do the same with Wine Delight. These roots are super long. They have been in the reservoir in water culture pretty much, so they can stay down there, which is cool. So I always check where my semi-hydro holes are because I want to make sure that I don't forget the habit of how to how I pot mine and the holes always go in the back. It wouldn't make much difference in this case because as we all know they all go to sleep and they start again and I could uh, reposition her but as it is a habit and it's ingrained in my head I am a creature of habit give that a bit of a squeeze because I want the letter to go into all the roots, nooks and crannies. There we go. We'll put some perlite in. You and all that could be in your lungs. Yep. If this keeps up with the culture the way it is now, I would highly recommend masks with built-in microphones. How about that? Huh? protective masks with built-in microphones. And I'm just going to top it also up with the remainder of my ceramis and watch this space because I need more ceramis. And no way am I ordering just ceramis. It just doesn't happen. There we go. So you don't blow away. Get your label in the back as well, where the holes go. Alrighty. So, this is, the ceramis is quite necessary. This is not just an excuse to get orchids. I don't have any other pots at the moment that I'm considering recycling because they're all in need of it. They are all, all the orchids situated in ceramics right now stay that way. So it's not like I can say, okay, I can pot you on and recycle the ceramics from that pot into the next. Not happening at this stage. But I can assure you that I need ceramics because if my Floralia order comes, I do have Rapiculus Lelias in there. My Harpophila is doing superbly. I would love to start repotting that as well. I'd like some ceramis for that. So I'm not just making excuses. I need ceramis. So watch this space. So with the exception of some, but they have to be protected. Once again, your response to my unboxing video is very much appreciated. I, I, I thank you very much. If there are any questions, and, and Annabelle, if you see this, if you have anything that you say, Nina, not like that, I would prefer if, 
Let me know straight away, please. Let me know. You know them better than I do. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate having you here, keeping me company. And I hope this wasn't too much of a jump cut video. Um, a lot of idle cars in the background. We had to work around that. Your patience is very, very much appreciated. And Annabelle, once again, thank you so very much for your kindness, your generosity, and for being a wonderful, wonderful friend. Thank you. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.